Jeremy Corbyn, 251,000. In September 2015, long-time parliamentary backbench socialist and dark horse candidate Jeremy Corbyn became the surprise new leader of the UK Labour Party. OK, conference. The media response to undermine and discredit him conference. was swift. The Daily Mail on the day of the election, or the day before the election, did 13 pages of why you shouldn't vote for Jeremy Corbyn. 13 pages! In this great endeavour to change our party, change our country, change our politics and change the way we do things. The reason why the establishment are terrified is because the railways are going to come back into public ownership and the waters and the utilities and actually it means that we're going to get the health service and all the privatisers out and actually it means that we're going to get trade union rights and all the anti-trade union laws taken away and actually it means that kids are going to be able to get paid proper wages. The Prime Minister was trying to undermine workers' rights with his trade union bill. To Corbyn. Does she not agree? that people sleeping on the streets of our capital city being charged exorbitant rents and children being brought up in bed and breakfast hotels is a disgrace to a civilised country. So many and so much of our media over so long endlessly describe desperate people in desperate situations as the problem. Corbyn's lifelong campaigning for social justice and human rights also included strong support for the Palestinian cause stand together with the people of Palestine for their liberation, their freedom and their recognition. It is our duty. Before long, the political attacks on him began to follow a theme. Julian Neuberger, does Labour have a problem with anti-Semitism? Yes. I'll be presenting Jeremy Corbyn with a list of the abuses that swim in the political sewer which he inhabits his attempts to deal with anti-Semitism are utterly condemned to failure. To me, the party's always been a safe haven from anti-Semitism, a safe place for me to be a Jew. Jeremy Corbyn says he's sincerely sorry for the pain caused by what he calls pockets of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. Pockets, very small pockets indeed. I've been a party member all this time in eight different constituency parties and once in 50 years have I ever witnessed an incident of anti-Semitism. The Labour Party now, I'll tell you right now, has become institutionally anti-Semitic. We were just gobsmacked about this wave of hysteria about rising anti-Semitism and the left is all anti-Semitic and it, it always has been, but now it's really coming to the fore. And we were saying, where, where, where is all this coming from? What the establishment will do is anything they can to rubbish Corbyn and anyone associated with him. I think that, that it's a very serious issue. Um, a lot of activists who are voicing um, criticism of Israel, many of whom are actually Jewish, are being alleged to be engaging in kind of anti-Semitic hate speech and suffering very punitive consequences like expulsion or suspension from the party. One such example was black anti-racist trainer and Corbyn stalwart, Jackie Walker. As vice chair of Corbyn's grassroots campaign group Momentum, she'd been out on the streets of South Thanet as part of the team working to stop Nigel Farage from winning a seat for UKIP at the Westminster Parliament. It's the kind of place where you're nose to nose fighting with fascists, the real fascists. So we have groups called things like Hitler was right and we were on the streets dealing with them. Now a leading Jeremy Corbyn supporter has provoked furious accusations of anti-Semitism. Jackie Walker, former vice chair of an Momentum. There's a momentum the steering committee of Corbyn. seeking to remove Jackie Walker as vice chair of the organisation. Jackie Monday. Walker suspended but not dealt with in disciplinary train. proceedings. You are fighting this suspension. You've called it a witch hunt. Attempts to intimidate and silence Jackie only increased her determination. And when councils and churches were pressured to close their doors, she spoke on the street instead. Meetings I have been due to speak at have been picketed and cancelled. There are restrictions being put on our freedom to associate freely with each other, to organise and defend oppressed people. Israel is running an apartheid state where one group of people have a huge reduction in human rights and are under military occupation because of their race. 
the point is, is what she's doing is actually fighting racism, just as Jackie always had, so that's, that's that. This was not only a mission to clear her name, but to expose what many now see as a witch hunt against Israel's fiercest critics. And with that, arguably the deepest crisis of the political left in Britain in recent times. What's happened to Jackie has been quite horrific. Even before she was suspended, I saw what was happening and I said she was being subject to a political lynching. To put such intense pressure on her as an individual, with her, a lifelong career of anti-racist work and training, and to portray her as a racist is a message to anyone who dissents, we can get you. So I was involved in the anti-apartheid movement. That struggle was then achieved. So I picked up on the issue to do with Israel and Palestine and Gaza, but on a very quite lowish level. My interests at that point were, were elsewhere. Then the issue of what was happening in Palestine to Palestinians, the attitude of our governments towards Israel, you, you couldn't ignore it. The last stuff with Gaza, that was the last straw for me. What was the point of bombing the El Wafa hospital, for goodness sake? How do you know it was Israel? You hit it, you killed them. You knew there were children in that building. We are trying to be as surgical as humanly possible in a very difficult combat environment. It was the way you were bombing Gaza that they find at fault and your refusal to change policy after massive civilian casualties had been identified. You're talking about a report that's been produced by a body which is biased. Now, Israel does cooperate. Jackie Walker's shocked awakening to the scale of Palestinian suffering is indicative of a rising trend. Public awareness of Israeli brutality continues to grow, and with it, a diverse international civic campaign of direct action. I asked her, oh, what would you say to people here in England? But the government of Israel has not been idle. In the United States especially, but elsewhere, Israel was losing ground in public opinion, including a Jewish public opinion, especially among the young. They established a, a, a special ministry to deal with it. Israel's enemies have learned that Israel cannot be overcome by conventional warfare or terrorism, but they have also turned to political, economic and legal warfare. A central element of this assault is what has become known as the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Campaign, or BDS. BDS supporters have been labeled anti-Semitic, but those claims have been disputed by some Jewish groups. The BDS call to end military occupation, grant equal rights to Arab citizens of Israel, and acknowledge the right of return for Palestinian refugees, stems from existing Israeli state policies and addresses fundamental human rights issues. But supporters of Israel don't see it that way. The boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign against Israel is dangerously wrong. Because beneath the surface, it's an attempt to delegitimize Israel as a prelude to its elimination. Opposition to BDS should be shared by all those who value human rights, who seek justice and who love peace. Erdan's ministry now enjoys privileges of secrecy and unaccountability, similar to Israel's other national intelligence and security operations. Its uh, action was mainly abroad, and it was, it was meant to uh, uh, do, deploy all sorts of dirty tricks. As we call it in the Ministry of Strategic Affairs, the hate net. Take a look. 
their main propaganda weapon was to denigrate anyone who is critical of Israel and of Zionism, anyone who is non-Zionist or anti-Zionist, as anti-Semitic. On closer inspection, this Israeli government graphic reads like a who's who of international human rights and pro-Palestinian organizations. In 2015, Erdan was appointed as head of this ministry. Not long afterwards, uh, Corbyn came along and, and it turned out that, that uh, 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 a lot of their energy of this Ministry of Strategic Affairs was directed to, at Britain. Al Jazeera's 2017 undercover investigation of Israeli government interference in UK politics further exposed the lengths Israel is prepared to go in identifying and targeting its so-called enemies. The Israeli agent, Shai Massot, worked for this ministry. He was based at the Israeli embassy, but he was not working for the Israeli uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He was working for the, for the Gilad Erdan's Ministry of Strategic Affairs. Uh, how he was trying to meddle in the Labour Party and so on. Can I give you some happy that I suggest you take down? Well, you know, if you look hard enough, I'm sure that there is something. I didn't make any public comment that I can think of about Israel, although on my Facebook page I certainly made it clear that I was a supporter of BDS. I'm a lecturer in journalism and media at Birkbeck University of London. Um, my main area of interest, uh, academic interest and research interest, has really always been, been um, at the nexus of issues to do with media power, media concentration, media ownership. Um, and that translates into uh, questions about media bias. The latest uh, report that we published in September 2018 was uh, focused on the, the issue of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party and what we found was uh, two things really. Uh, systematic um, inaccuracies both in terms of the way in which individuals are quoted, uh, inaccuracies in the way in which assertions of fact are made by either sources and quite often journalists and correspondents and news anchors themselves uh, that were simply inaccurate. And on the other hand, what we find alongside that is an overwhelming emphasis on sources mobilizing a particular agenda and a particular viewpoint. If you look at the way individuals are routinely misquoted um, on this issue, very starkly and egregiously misquoted. So they fish through people's accounts and they'll go back sometimes by the way years into your account and they will take comments and they will put them totally out of context and that's what they did to me. Back in May she was suspended from the Labour Party after posting during a Facebook discussion that Jews were chief financiers of the sugar and slave trade. I said, many Jews, my ancestors too, were the chief financiers of the sugar and slave trade. Now what I should have said, of course, was amongst. She hasn't been very meticulous in, in use of language, so it's, she fell victim. They are looking for cases. This is a Facebook post. This isn't a lecture, you know. This was not talking about Jews in Europe. This was talking about my ancestors. They were among the financiers of the, or, I mean, which is a well-known fact. But I, I mean, uh, this, this is what she meant. There were Jews who were involved in the slave trade. That's just true. But Jackie was not trying to say that there's something internal to Jewish people that make them, make or us, you know, um, these, these rapacious capitalists trying to make money over black people. And it's unfortunate that a charitable reading wasn't done. But again, uh, the writing is there. And the fact of the matter is she is very explicit uh, that her, her position is a humanist position, that there should be a commitment to fighting against all forms of enslavement and all forms of genocide. So this is the context in which this was dug up. 
by a group called the Israel Advocacy Movement, a group which is said to be funded from Israel. She is targeted. She is selected as a, as a as a sort of test case by by the Zionist uh, lobby. We do Zionism. These are the people who did it. Hi, we're Israel Advocacy Movement. We're here at Trafalgar Square waiting for a PSC Gaza rally. You're probably wondering why we're dressed like this. It's because we want to sneak into their demonstration and hand out flyers promoting Israel and peace because so many of their demonstrators have been brainwashed into hating Israel. Start handing out. Yeah? Start handing out. Our mission is to counter the increasing hostility Israel suffers at the hands of the British public. One of the days where you can have hundreds of Palestinian activists protesting for the destruction of Israel and there's no opposition. Spotted on the street with the Israel advocacy movement is self-described professional blogger, researcher and author David Collier. There's always been hard right anti-Semitism, there's always been a few Nazis on the streets. The new element, I think, is the rise of anti-Semitism on the left. It's under an umbrella, it's almost hidden under an umbrella of humanitarian action that makes it far more insidious and far more dangerous. Though funded independently, Collier's own political connections are open to question. He's pictured here as part of a small group protesting a Palestinian cultural event in the summer of 2017, including Paul Besser, former intelligence officer of the far-right group Britain First. This pro-Israel propagandist has painstakingly compiled several glossy booklets adopted uncritically by much of the mainstream media, seeking to link pro-Palestinian organisations and their members with anti-Semitic content. An approach heartily endorsed by groups like Glasgow Friends of Israel. So David has spent some months trolling through social media looking for examples of anti-Semitic postings. So, you know, we can flick through this document and there is ample evidence. And even if you don't agree with every single one of these examples, there's more than enough to show that anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial is alive and well in Scotland. Collier's research has been used by Labour Party officials hostile to Jeremy Corbyn to smear left-wingers, including Jewish activists. A referral had come through this person called Collier. What happened was I got a letter suspending me on the grounds that I had visited a Facebook page. Then later, when I asked for the evidence, was sent some rather odd stills from this Facebook page, which even I found difficult to understand as anti-Semitic. When I got the letter lifting my suspension, they then explained that it was for me visiting Palestine Live Facebook page. But they, then they found that there was no substance to this matter. I'm really exercised about this because I think this crying wolf about anti-Semitism in the Labour Party is extremely reckless. I mean, it's dangerous. Holocaust denial and Jewish conspiracies are obvious and abhorrent expressions of anti-Semitism and they abound on social media. But in an online world of bots and trolls and fake accounts and unlimited interconnectivity, the potential for attributing guilt by association is clear. Like my mum says, you can make anybody look like a devil if you want to. And she's absolutely right. It's what they've done to Jeremy Corbyn. In fact, they could do it to anybody. At the last Labour conference, Jackie Walker was arguing that anti-Semitism doesn't exist. When have I ever done that? A European who is designated white and also Jewish, for those individuals who would like to be completely designated white, a Jew like Jackie poses a serious problem. Her birth certificate proves there isn't one drop of Jewish blood in her veins. People who want to do moral slurs and they don't want nuanced stories. They want black and white stories. Good guys, bad guys, end of story. And so in a way for Jews who want to be white, they benefit from the idea of the Jew hating black. Johnny Kravitz 
Jackie Walker is as Jewish as, as a pork pie. Stop harassing Jews, you f***ing Nazi scum. I'm not on Twitter because Twitter is so absolutely vicious. I came off of it when people started to suggest that I should be burnt alive and, and uh, you know, raped and stuff like that. So I came off of it. Why do you think they've gone for Jackie? I think they felt she was, for some reason or other, an easy target, a black Jewish member of the Labour Party, a woman. I hate saying it. I think there are a whole set of underlying prejudices. Faced with a cowed political establishment, where even natural friends were failing to support her, and a media intent on repeating false and distorted allegations without any opportunity to correct them, Jackie Walker decided to push back with a creative project of her own. This was just me doing this as my response to what the media were doing to me in public and to what the Labour Party apparatus was doing to me in private. I decided I would not be silenced. I would speak up and I would find my own way. And my own way of doing it was to write with a comrade a drama, um, a one-woman show, where I would play all five parts. To understand what has happened to me now, you have to understand what brought me into the world. I had that sort of idea that what we wanted to do is to make politics personal. This is my great-grandmother, and it's her mother that was born a slave. This is my mum when she was about 18, I suppose, and this is me with my mother. You know, one of those pictures that gets taken of my beautiful baby sort of thing. Put her in a bin, throw petrol on her, set her on fire, lynch the bitch. That was just some of the nicer tweets. My mum and my brother, we were deported. My mother was deported for un-American activities. The shot of us on our way to England on the boat. Here we are, this little sort of dirt poor family on a council estate, and our bread and butter conversation at home was about politics. Being open about my background and the history, not just of what happened to me and my family, is absolutely critical to understanding my political work. Black people who were fighting against enslavement got nowhere. They were lynched and worse for attempting to liberate themselves. My father was a, a Russian Ashkenazi Jew, white, I have to say that, I have to say he's white. Yeah. Um, and my mother was a Jamaican woman of Jewish descent. She was descended from Portuguese Jews, as well as from Africans as well. But they met because they were both involved in the civil rights movement. And they were involved in that extraordinary protest, the busing. We went down to what Dorothy called the belly of the beast, the southern states of America. And we went on those buses there was what you call segregation. Actually, you need to think of it more like apartheid. All my Jewish comrades, we were all there. What you've got to understand about my mother is that the political formative moment of her life was experiencing McCarthyism. And there was this witch hunt led by this man. What's his name now? Senator McCarthy, that's it. We held each other's hands and we refused to be separated. We would not move. And they dragged us from those buses and they set their dogs on us and they beat us and they put us into prison. What's happening now with the anti-Semitism, we have seen it with McCarthyism. 
And what we see is we see an establishment and a media that becomes complicit. You want to change things. You want to resist. You are a threat. And they start actually stoking the witch hunt. So, the dossier, the dodgy dossier. <sighs> 2,100 pages of redacted paper printed off. I made a, uh, an access request because, you know, when you have your hearing in the Labour Party, um, you're not allowed to see who your accusers are or what it is they're saying about you. Oh, my Lord. Wow. OK. People who wanted to change things, they were accused of being, uh, you know, un-American, commies. <laughs> they were smeared. But at least one case, that of Jackie Walker, has been shown to be unfounded. And so Jackie has been reinstated. And in her interview on the Today programme, it became clear that her private conversation was taken completely out of context. I'm not sure her suspension was necessary. This is obviously an internal one with a serious screen grab which they intend to publish about Labour member Jacqueline Walker alleging they amounted to anti-Semitism. You start to begin to think, what is going on here? Having looked at the screen gabs, most were legitimate political opinion. What is going on with, you know, a party system which is encouraging a kind of Stasi-like sort of um, informing about, about people. The African Holocaust language could be seen as extremely offensive, but it might also count as clumsy but legitimately held belief. In my view, we were a bit too quick to respond to this one. So what this person is saying, who's obviously in the compliance unit, is this is a pretty weak case. But this pretty weak case smashed my reputation. Jackie Walker, who's vice chair of the left-wing Momentum Group, was heckled at a meeting on Monday after she apparently criticised Holocaust Memorial Day for not including non-Jewish genocide victims. The things she say about Holocaust. OK, she say, in terms of Holocaust Day, wouldn't it be wonderful if Holocaust Day was open to all people who experience Holocaust? I mean, that's not just offensive, but it's also plain wrong, isn't it? The attack against her is based on ignorance. I don't think that Jackie questioned the, the uh, Judeo side, the Holocaust in, in relation to the Jews. She was actually putting it in a wider context. She's being attacked in a framework that, that moralizes the issue when in fact she's raising a political issue. But this is a familiar thing in, in neoliberal and neoconservative societies because they give the illusion that these are all about the individual character of people, not the institutions of power. And her criticism was about institutions of power. Holocaust Day does not include any of the terrible things that were done before the Nazi time. In 1929, the uh, genocide of the Armenians during the First World War, especially in 1915, was defined, was described as an administrative holocaust. To, today we would say a bureaucratic uh, holocaust. And who, who coined this phrase? Winston Churchill. All the stuff about black people and slavery, even the things that happened in the Belgian Congo only 30 years before the Nazis came to power, when they killed 10, 12 million Africans. None of that. The Roma people, mm -hmm. so-called gypsies, mm -hmm. they also have a long history, and in fact, 
ongoing history of being persecuted and victimized. The treatment by the Nazis of the Roma was exactly the same as that of the Jews. That's what I'm asking about. But to say that it's a crime, it's racist to even to even raise a question. Commemorating the Jewish Holocaust should be inclusive. Never again should have a universalist a human interpretation, not a narrow uh, uh, ethnic interpretation. There's two million, going on for two million people of African descent living in this country. Why do we not have a national centre commemorating our Holocaust, which actually funded so much of the development of this country? I am the product of victims and perpetrators. I am the product of two people who have been victims, but who also, because that's how history works, at times will have been perpetrators. Nobody is pure. Nobody hasn't been a victim in their ancestral lives. We all share that. That's the experience of being human beings. I'm not only Jewish, but I'm also of Tamil ancestry. And, you know, that's Jackie's point. But the fact is, if I'm in the United States, am I to look at my children who are also of Native American ancestry and, and, and completely ignore the, 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 what the United States did to the indigenous peoples? I've been told anti-Semitism is a special form of racism. It has special characteristics. So if you told me that racism against Jews is special, I'll agree with you. Like every other form of racism is special. Of all the many claims of what Jackie Walker has said and why, none is more important to understanding the whole so-called witch hunt than her apparent questioning of anti-Semitism. Jackie Walker, one of the things um, that resulted in your current suspension uh, of your Labour Party membership was you said that I still haven't heard a definition of anti-Semitism that I can work with. What the media crucially failed to explain was that this training meeting at which Jackie Walker was secretly filmed was organised by the ardently pro-Israel Jewish Labour movement and was structured around a new definition of anti-Semitism that in its wording and purpose has become hugely controversial. I was there, I saw the meeting, and then I saw how that, the filming of that meeting was put together, how it was edited. The thing that they um, completely quoted out of context was this, I haven't heard a definition of anti-Semitism I can work with. But of course what she meant was within the training session. It was obvious to everybody. Not only did they cut together something which utterly um, misrepresented Jackie, it was then put out to the national media and used to blacken her name. And one of the points I've made in my testimony in terms of Jackie's hearing is that actually some of us asked similar questions and were heard. We weren't taking that seriously, but Jackie asked the questions and was shouted down. There were a lot of people there, a lot of Jewish people there who were offended by what the JLM was saying. The Jewish labour movement have monopolised the right to provide training in anti-Semitism. We do not accept their view of what anti-Semitism is. The general idea of what they were putting across was that to attack Israel was to be anti-Semitic. And that's what the, a lot of people were arguing against in the room. The danger for the Labour Party is any attempt to police discussion rather than having the discussion. So they gave us lots of statistics about the rise in anti-Semitic incidents, but it was absolutely uh, tied to what's, what became the IHRA definition. In response to the work of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, Britain will be adopting a formal definition of anti-Semitism. Just last week, we were at the forefront to try to ensure that the definition was adopted across the continent too. Now, the Labour Party has adopted the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance is a non-statutory intergovernmental body. At a meeting a couple of years ago, 
it adopted a very bland definition of anti-Semitism, just 39 words. Anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. And of course, of course we would accept that. Examples had been attached to it of what might be considered anti-Semitic activity. Of the examples that have been added, the 11 examples, seven of them relate to the way in which people criticise the state of Israel and its behaviour. The problem with it is that it includes in its provisions um, elements that are designed to prevent certain kinds of criticism of Israel and of Zionism. I mean, of course, we all want to put an end to, to anti-Semitism. This definition has nothing to do with it. You're not going to defeat far-right anti-Semites, the person who attacked the synagogue in Pittsburgh, for instance, by saying you can't describe Israel as a racist state. We've encouraged local authorities to adopt the definition and to date 135 local authorities across the United Kingdom have done so. Why do people adopt it with such alacrity? Well, let's face it, if you go to a local authority or a governmental body and you say, we've got this thing which is going to get rid of anti-Semitism, people will go, oh my God, we all hate anti-Semitism, tick. I have been at council meetings, I've been in council chambers where the, the document is presented, there's no discussion, no debate, everybody just puts their there hand up. The bottom. It is, it's a fake. The agenda and perspective being put forward by uh, sources claiming to represent the mainstream Jewish community was that this definition had been accepted by virtually everyone other than the Labour Party. Uh, those kinds of assertions were clearly false, both on the actual facts that they were uh, asserting in relation to the anti-Semitism uh, definition, but also some of the value-based judgments they were making about the Labour Party, about the leadership, about uh, the nature of anti-Semitism, all of which were part and parcel of a legitimate debate. I do not recognise the picture that is being painted, not just that there are anti-Semites in the Labour Party, as a member of the NEC said to me, with 600,000 members there probably are, there are probably some who think the world is flat. But that the idea that the Labour Party is uninhabitable for Jews, this is what's written in the Jewish Chronicle. We also find uh, almost, again, a systematic exclusion of the views put forward by what we might call relevant expert opinion. The harshest critics, the most coherent critics, have been leading Jewish intellectuals such as Anthony Lerman, former head of the Institute of Jewish Policy Research, Brian Clogg, a leading expert on anti-Semitism, and even, this is significant, Kenneth Stern, an American academic who drafted the original document which has morphed into this IHRA thing because it represses freedom of speech. Andrew Neil on The Daily Politics Show would just make statements to the effect that this is a universal or consensual definition. John Humphreys uh, made a similar assertion that it's been adopted by every country in the world. We actually went to the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. We dropped them an email and we said, can you just confirm how many countries have formally adopted this definition? To which the response was eight. We in Jewish Voice for Labour and many of our friends really resent the fact that it's presented as if it's there's one, there's one internationally recognised definition and all Jews want it. We don't. What was virtually ignored altogether or consistently marginalised were the views of other Jewish groups. Can you remember just over two years ago we had a leader of the Labour Party who was a Jew who was elected in a straight fight with another Jew who was his own brother. If the Labour Party is so full of anti-Semites that they couldn't find one pure-blooded Aryan to stand against this, they must be the most incompetent anti-Semites in the history of the Jewish people. And if only all anti-Semites in history had been that incompetent, the history of the Jews would have been a lot happier. We grew up out of groups like Jews for Jeremy, out of... Uh, Jews for Justice for Palestinians, out of free speech on Israel, out of the Jewish Socialist group, people coming together to say there is another Jewish voice in the Labour Party, proud of the radical Jewish tradition which has fought for justice, equality, tolerance in movements throughout the world and always in support of the oppressed. That is our tradition. The Labour Party, both the uh, NEC, um, the Labour Party's executive committee, both the uh, leadership itself, 
uh, had made a number of statements on the record in relation to this particular issue, the controversy surrounding the definition of anti-Semitism. It's quite clear that their position was known and on the public record, that they were defensive of the, the proposed changes, that they felt that it more um, accurately and broadly reflected the views, not just of the Jewish community at large, but of other minority communities, that it was an, uh, absolutely took into account some of the uh, problems to do with the uh, IHRA definition. Uh, and yet we find in The Guardian an astonishing number of articles specifically about this issue, the controversy surrounding the definition, where there are no quoted sources at all that are defending the party's position. Whereas certain types of sources, um, namely the leaders of so-called mainstream Jewish groups, if they simply publish a letter, it becomes almost immediately uh, the focus of headline coverage across platforms and across news outlets. The Jewish Chronicle, Jewish News and Jewish Telegraph are all warning that a government led by the Labour leader would pose an existential threat to Jewish life in the UK. It is unprecedented for three community newspapers to have the same headline, the same story, the same editorial. I've never known such a degree of concern uh, about uh, a party. This man now being accused of being the forefront of racism and fascism. That's what we're talking about. This is mad. This all takes place in an atmosphere of a shift to the right in this country and across Europe. Jeremy Corbyn is a threat. So people are up from the Blair right to the far right. They've been very happy to use this weapon of anti-Semitism to attack the left. Anti-Semitism is so socially unacceptable that it can only survive the way a virus survives, which is by mutating. Zionism, the Zionist movement, has been able to mobilize the Jewish community uh, on the basis of their collective memory of a long history of persecution. Today you can't hate anyone for their race, so you hate them for their nation state. And that is why anti-Zionism is the new anti-Semitism. The liberal elite are committed to what they see as the defense of Israel being the equivalent of opposing anti-Semitism. And that is obviously totally misconceived. We must be free to criticise any political ideology that advances the rights of one people over another, and that includes Zionism. And here's the crux. Being clear about Zionism is critical to understanding the nature of Israel as it exists, and the reason why it provokes such vigorous opposition. Jewish nationalists, both religious and secular, insist that Zionism should be understood simply as its people's aspiration for self-determination. I'm a Zionist and I'm very proud of being a Zionist and as far as I'm concerned a Zionist is someone who believes that Israel should be the homeland for the Jewish people. But not all Jews are Zionists. Prior to the Second World War a mass Jewish left-wing movement established in Eastern Europe called the Bund actively campaigned against the idea of a separate ethnic state. בבונדאית קוראים לזה דויקאי. דורטן וומיר לבן, דורט איזו זרלנט. And there are many contemporary Jewish groups who feel the same way. And not all Zionists are Jews. 
It's a pleasure to be a representative of Her Majesty's Government and to say to this audience that I'm proud to be a friend of Israel and proud to be a Zionist. I notice you're wearing a shirt or a button that says I'm a Zionist. Uh, what is a Zion? Well, a Zionist someone believes in a homeland for Jewish people. When I was a young senator, I'd say, if I were a Jew, I'd be a Zionist. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. Then there are the evangelicals. Tens of millions of them. God gave them that land. They own that land. For a large and increasingly politicized block of fundamentalist Christians, Zionism is about God's promise to Abraham. To them, uncritical support of Israel is simply not negotiable. It's an article of faith. I'm going to bless the people of the Bible. I'm going to bless God's chosen people. And more disturbingly, an integral component in the fulfillment of Enday's theology. The final act of the book of Revelation is going to begin right here at this place. And when Israel's about to be defeated, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ himself will intervene. You And then there is the modern historical reality, as it has unfolded on the ground. Zionism was, at first, a movement of people trying to get out of Europe and redefine Judaism as a nation state, and there was nothing wrong with it. The problem is that for uh, religious reasons, mainly, and because of a lot of pressure from Christian Zionists who were already active then, Palestine was chosen as a destination. So Zionism became, from a movement of liberation, a movement that dispossessed the local native Palestinians. In the scholarly world, we call these movements settler colonialism. We distinguish between them and, and colonialism because the settler colonialists are uh, intent on destroying and eliminating the natives. And I think that's what happened in Palestine. It is this story of Palestinian dispossession, ethnic cleansing, and an ongoing process of what Pape has termed incremental genocide, which for genuine activists, Zionism represents. The whole issue of Palestine, Israel, Zionism is anachronistic. We are witnessing a conflict in the 21st century that for the most part is rooted in the 19th century and was supposed to have been really ended by the middle of the 20th century. In Berlin, a growing exile community of young Israeli Jewish radicals is forming as the country of their birth moves further towards full-blown apartheid. you'll find many different shades of Zionist ideology. But what the Zionist project is, is a matter of fact. The colonization of Palestine by Jewish people and making it into a majority uh, uh, Jewish nation state. And as the, the conflict that it gives rise to develop, uh, racism is bound to increase. And you can see this in the present state of Israel. <laughs> Why oh, the Sirton? Yes! In Britain, the public watched in horror as innocent Palestinians were killed and thousands wounded by IDF snipers for daring to protest their dehumanization. Yet some Labour Party MPs aligned themselves with those trying to justify the massacre, while many, many more simply kept quiet. How has it come to this? Uh, the fact is that the Western Bloc is what the Labour leadership uh, is committed to. And within that context, criticism of Israel is seen as disloyalty and potential threat to Western security. The left is in fact divided on the issue. I mean, the, the people who came through the student movement from the late 60s generally identified with anti-colonial struggles and the anti-imperialist struggles and the anti-racist struggles, they recognised the Palestinian struggle as part of that broader historical process. Important sections of the Labour Party 
remained loyal to the idea that Britain's main ally is the United States. I think they make an assessment that to speak out in support of the Palestinians would have political costs. There is an additional factor, of course, that uh, the Israel-Palestine issue continues to be viewed as a continuation of the anti-fascist, anti-anti-Semitic struggle, not acknowledging Israel is an occupying force that is itself carrying out ethnic cleansing. It's an internal conflict within the thinking of many liberal-minded people that they can accommodate those two realities. Israel is a valuable strategic asset of the United States. It is the most reliable junior partner of the United States there is no other word for it, imperialism, in the Middle East region and beyond. I mean, you only have to look at the way that the armaments industry is integrated. You really cannot speak of a British or an American or an Israeli arms industry. They are so integrated on every level. On December 6, 2017, at my direction, the United States finally and officially recognized Jerusalem as the true capital of Israel. The Zionist Project, emboldened by unprecedented support from the Trump White House, is now surging ahead in its attempt to eliminate Palestine from history. Its muscular ultranationalism has become a model and an inspiration, not just for white supremacists in America, but for extreme right regimes now emerging across parts of Europe. And there are troubling signs in the UK too. Recent large-scale far-right demonstrations in central London have revealed a convergence of fascist and neo-Nazi groups with hardline Zionists. Tommy Robinson's 2016 trip to Israel and the funding by pro-Israel groups of both his legal defence fund and the Free Tommy campaign suggest that this natural alliance may now be part of a more coordinated common cause. We believe that Israel has a right to exist. We believe Israel has a right to defend itself from any aggressor, Islamist or otherwise. And if those two things make me a Zionist, then so be it, I must be a Zionist. They could not defeat us as communists. Instead, they're called progressives and liberals. This is a struggle for power between right and left. I've never known a time like it politically. What we're seeing happening in the world right now with the, of, of the cultivation of fascism and the Israeli state, just as with right now the American state, makes alliances with those nefarious forces. Let's face it, the people are going to have to do something politically to transform this. Look at what's happening now in Europe with these right-wing racist governments. Many of them very close friends with Netanyahu. It's about some people having control of most people so that the focus of attention is not on the people who have power but on the scapegoats the blacks, the Jews, the Romani, the Muslims, whoever it is. The important thing about what the Nazis did to the peoples that they exterminated is not that it happened in Germany or that it could only happen in Germany. The issue is that this could happen again and it could happen anywhere. should make commemorations of Holocaust bigger. It needs to be encompassing because any peoples have the potential to do this. A lot of people don't understand the fundamental basic point about the way, about how, how racism works. Racism is about a form of dehumanization, but racism in the dehumanization valorizes a group of people who are to have everything 
and people who are, to, who are as a legitimate practice to have nothing. I am really proud of the history of what my mother went through, what my mother's mothers went through for centuries just to survive. They were fighting overwhelming political and economic forces. And I think there are real similarities with that and what's happening in, in Palestine and Israel now. That's what it means to be oppressed. The construction of Palestinians as intrinsically illegitimate creates a situation in which for them to have anything is treated as a wrong. And that is a dangerous imposition on a people. I'm able to work with Palestinian issues truthfully in that regard. I don't go in there as the holier-than-thou Jew or, or the holier-than-thou Black. Uh, th these are experiences in which we're to work together to try to build a better situation for humankind. By bravely speaking out and linking the Palestinian cause with other historical struggles against colonial and state-led racial oppression, Jackie Walker, along with other passionate campaigners for justice, might in normal times be thought of as bringing credit to a left-wing movement rather than disrepute. But attacks on the left are intensifying and a world order based on human rights and international law is fracturing. Against this background, committed support for all those fighting for the values that would safeguard a civilized future has become critical. On March 21st, a group between 5,000 and 7,000 people converged on the local police station in protest to the past books that Africans had to carry with them. Saying that this is an unlawful assembly, you have to disperse, you are ordered to disperse, go home or go to your church. This march will not continue. <laughs> They streamed towards the fence which contains them, Palestinians in their thousands. As the crowd grew to nearly 20,000, things took a turn for the worst. <laughs> 130 police reinforcements were called in armed with machine guns while the protesters had nothing more than stones. Nobody we saw being carried off had appeared to be armed. We were there for several hours. The death toll came to 69, including eight women and ten children. Ambulances had been on standby, but as fast as they came, they simply couldn't keep up. Emergency workers risked their own lives treating the injured close to Israel's front line. South Africa had to seriously come to terms with its increasing isolation within the world. 